I'm back with Dano, Dan Steinhardt, if you uh, haven't been following us on other videos, and we're going to talk a little bit about Epson Print Layout. And Epson Print Layout is probably one of the easiest ways to print your pictures that I've come across in a long time. And uh, it, it's very simple. You make a few choices and you hit print and you're off and running. Uh, you have to make sure that Epson Print Layout is working with the proper printers. Works on Windows, Mac, and uh, iPhone, and iPad, and uh, it's a blast. I'm finding I'm making more pictures on a regular basis uh, with this uh, program, mainly because I can do it right from my mobile device, and Epson Print Layout has helped me in that sense. I wouldn't know about how it does with hair, <laughs> but go ahead. Anyway, it, it's, it's very simple, and I've asked Dan uh, to show us a little bit about Epson Print Layout so you can see just how easy it is. Um, and what we'll do is we'll show it to you here on the Mac, and then uh, we'll do a little mobile device on the iPad and maybe iPhone so you can see how it works there. Epson Print Layout is a free download, epson.com forward slash Epson Print Layout, or just Google Epson Print Layout, and works on Mac, works on Windows. Uh, we're going to just uh, do an abbreviated version here and show how to, you can print from Photoshop into Epson Print Layout. Um, certainly you can do that from Lightroom. You can also simply drag files into Epson Print Layout. And it's not a 100% for every use there is professionally, but for the majority of uh, work professional photographers, serious amateurs want to do, this is a great way to do a color managed workflow without hunting for hundreds of profiles late at night after too many beers with high resolution monitors. <laughs> so here's an image that I uh, shot at Graffiti Pier uh, in Philadelphia. I, I, I was tipped off about this place, and today I believe it's all chained off, and you can't get in there, but hopefully one of these days it'll uh, open up again. And I saw this person uh, walking around, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a great demo file, especially for rendering intent, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but if you're in Photoshop, you simply go to File, Automate, Epson Print Layout, and this will launch Epson Print Layout, and depending upon the size of the file and how much RAM you have in your computer, uh, this will look up really quick, or it might take a second. So if you look down here while this is opening up, you'll get a little message saying image loading, and the image is now loaded in Epson Print Layout. You can, there's some preferences. You can make this black, you can make this gray, you can make this white. This is a browser window, and you, all you have to do is just kind of grab this. And if you want to have a larger browser area, smaller image, you can customize this to however you'd like. And Epson Print Layout is designed to work from the top down. Makes sense. And the first thing you need to do, the number one thing, is select the printer. So you've you've installed a, a printer that has wireless, and you know you're, 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 you've selected and paired it up. You can go wireless, or you can go wired, wired. depending on the printer that you have. But it sees what's uh, on the network. Here at uh, Photo PXL, you've got two printers. At uh, my home office, there's a whole bunch of them on there. I'm in there because we're always testing. So that's the most important thing with Epson Print Layout. Choose the printer. In this case, we're going to uh, print to the uh, P900. For those that always want to know, SC stands for Sure Color. That's a brand name. Let's call it the P900. And if you really want to know, the P stand, it originally stood for photography, photo printers, but it can also meet production printers. Or pro printers. Uh, photo or production because there are other pro printers at Epson, but yes. solvents, signage, and other types of markets. And then just start moving down. What is the media type? Uh, this is the list of medias. And I wanted to point out a few things. So uh, Legacy Platine, yes. you know, one of our finest photo black uh, ink medias, great DMAX. Some people are watching this, they're new to photography, and they get confused by the term media. Media is an all-encompassing term for paper. But canvas, is canvas a paper or canvas is a media? There's different types of things. So this is not a major uh, broadcast network. This is the paper. Uh, so let's select uh, Legacy Platine. And I think we're uh, going to use uh, 13 by 19 paper. And these are the paper sizes. And this might take a second to load. If you see down here in the bottom right, if things are like, what's happening? It's just it's loading that It's resizing the paper for the layout, yes. Right. And with uh, Epson Print Layout, depending on the printer, in this case, the P900, these are the options you have. We're simply going to be printing sheets. But uh, the P900, if you have the optional uh, roll adapter, you can do rolls. You can do the front fine art feed. You can also do poster board. But in this case, we're just going to go with sheet. 
And when it comes to quality, there's a few settings with this paper. High quality, max quality, and this thing called max quality carbon black. Ooh. Carbon black is a mode. It, it actually engages something called black enhance overcoat, which is the technology. So just to cut to the chase, if you are using very high gloss papers, such as metallic glossy or uh, premium photo glossy, uh, this mode, carbon black mode, with the black enhanced overcoat technology will improve the D-Max. It has very little effect on other papers and no effect on other papers. So our recommendation is, even though it may be available on a paper like Premium Luster, uh, the benefit of it is very, 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 very small and it does increase your printing time. So if you're using metallic glossy, you're using the glossy papers, uh, and you have a lot of D-Max blacks, this really is a, a terrific feature. Otherwise, be sure to set max quality. max quality. Otherwise, your printing times will almost double. Now we just move down to the next section. And this is uh, actually one of my favorite areas. A lot of people talk about the color management. But I always struggle personally because I went to art school and I'm slow. You know, I'm not good with the math. You know? In Photoshop is sizing stuff. You know? and that's one of the nice things about rips. Yep. But maybe you, know, you really don't need to use a rip is getting things centered and how you move things around. So of course, always move the way down and you have the options here if you're doing panos or if you're doing gallery wraps. In this case, it's just a standard image. And of course, my favorite uh, landscape and portrait and what happens if you have a vertical landscape and a horizontal portrait. I lost that argument a long time ago. So of course, for those that are new to this, landscape means horizontal, oh, there's not portrait like we're means at. vertical, even though it's, because some people go, well, it's not a portrait. It's okay, vertical. Portraits are normally done in vertical. Well, I had in shoulder. Points. When I was at art school, you violated all those rules. Well, but that's we a different. Thing. We were taught to break rules that's in art right. school. So this is landscape, even though it's not of a landscape. Scale to fit is if you want to max out the paper. Don't do this <laughs> unless you really want to max out the paper. Uh, and this is what I really love about Epson Print Layout. You have these options here: none, center, vertical, horizontal. Uh, if you would like it centered, you can then take your mouse and grab any corner and you can size this visually based on the paper size you set, yep. and it will absolutely be dead centered. Yeah. And, and you don't have to go into special media settings and set up margins and all those things in Photoshop. Very simple. Another thing that's great to do is some people like to assign their prints, and they like to leave space at yep. the bottom. So if you select horizontal, I can just grab the image. Move it up. And I can move it up. It can be a little heavier bottom. And now I'm going to try to push it left, try to push it right. It won't, won't do it. It's going to keep my margins equal on both sides. And I can visually set this up here for more space in the bottom. Or if I have a specific area that I need or I have a mat or a mount, you can just plug those numbers directly in the keyboard. A lot of times if I want to put a 4 by 6 on there or a 4 by 5 I can do that just by printing print size. Well, if you select a paper size, but let's say you wanted to put like four, multiple four by sixes on one sheet of paper, you can set up a simple template. For me personally, being a visual person, I just like to move it around and then, you know, and then there's no surprises when you make the print. I often get a surprise when I'm printing directly out of Photoshop and it's like, oh, it's a little here, I got a little margin there. What about this? What about that? So let's just set this back to center. Now we're gonna move down to the color management section. The scary color management. Oh, remember the old days of double color management? Oh, do I have to do that? You have to go here in Photoshop. Out, oh, no, then you've got to go to, back into the driver. you got to set all stuff there. Oh, you have to go back to Photoshop. You're using an ICC color profile. You select. You, you have these choices here. Printer manages colors. Advanced black and white photo ICC profile. Just select use ICC profile. And if you selected the printer up here, and the paper up here, it'll automatically you find the select right profile. Them. And uh, there's no, nope. now for, there are some people that just love the thrill of hunting for it, right? I have to and, admit, I've hunted for it just to make sure <laughs> it's, see if it's I can just find like, it, but it or, works. Or, you know, a significant other is walking by and you, you want to kind of show off and you hit that thing. You start scrolling around and go, oh boy, he's really smart. Uh, the know? auto right. just works perfect. If so. you'd like, you can go in here and you can go, you make okay. Your life up. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, and I got to tell you, at two in the morning and it's real easy to make a mistake in here. Yeah, right? I don't think I'll print any. I'll just go to auto. Auto select and the whole color management thing is done except for one thing, and that's choosing the rendering intent. I may do a little demo. We'll do a demo to help people understand what 
rendering intent does as it relates to images that are out of gamut and what out of gamut means. We'll do that in three dimensions. We'll be very oh, excited. Oh, really? Well, it's going to be a very yeah. exciting thing to look forward but, to. Stay uh, tuned. It's essentially saying if you have a very saturated image or colors that are out of gamut for the ink and the paper that you're using, you have to select a rendering intent to tell the printer, I want you to take these out of gamut colors and bring them to the edge of the gamut or to remap them in ways. It's an extraordinarily complicated uh, process. And when people say, oh, you should always use this, you should always use that, uh, don't do that. <laughs> you want to do this concept known as soft proofing, where you want to predict what is the right one to do. It will only work either using Epson print layout or using Photoshop or using any other method if you've calibrated your monitor. This is completely useless if you've not calibrated your monitor. Yes. And it's not perfect, but it's going to get you very close. If you have calibrated your monitor, there are two rendering intents for photography, perceptual and relative colorimetric, often just called relative. In Photoshop, you'll be given four options. And you have to remember not to use the other two, which were, I mean, I try to forget what the other two are. If your monitor's calibrated, you then look at your image and toggle between the two. And, you, and here's the artistic side of it. Whichever one you like better, very Use subjective, it. yes. Use it. This is going to predict how the printer will handle out of gamut color. And under certain circumstances, you can see the difference pretty readily if you, depending on the file. Depends on the file, depends on the paper you're using. If we were to use a, a cotton fiber fine art paper because of dot gain, inherently less saturation, rendering intent has less effect. Although you'd be surprised, some images can do that. So this is just the a very simple way of choosing the right rendering intent. So what you're saying here is Epson Print Layout has, is basically showing you soft proofing the whole time as a result of this. So, you know, if you change to color metric, you can. And the key thing is whether you're doing it in Photoshop, whether you're doing it in Lightroom, whether you're using this, calibrate your monitor. Otherwise, you're going to waste time and you're going to you're going to waste ink and paper. Calibration uh, is just as a side note is really important. There's a number of different ways to calibrate. We're going to cover that in a separate video, but it takes what five minutes. Uh, you can set your monitor up and, and and computer up to remind you in three weeks to recalibrate or check your calibration. And uh, the, most of the software that you use to calibrate will show you the differences between what an image looked like before it was calibrated and when it was calibrated, so you can really see a difference. Very simple to do, not expensive to get one of these things, and you can use them on all your different machines. There's one more decision you have to make in color management, and it's the very scary looking black point compensation. Now, black point compensation was developed because of Developed by, well, one person claims that he invented it. I, you know, in the color management world, there's some very interesting personalities. <laughs> it's a whole storybook there. Here's the thing, the cutting to the chase, because it is actually a very complicated procedure of how it was developed, why it's there. Uh, black point compensation is absolutely required if you're using relative, or also the full thing is relative color and metric. If you've chosen that through soft proofing because that's what you prefer, make sure black point compensation is checked. You could do a full week uh, workshop on why, just check it and you're gonna be fine. Keep now, it simple, keep it simple. If you prefer perceptual, my recommendation is always keep black point compensation checked. Always. The reason is it has no effect on perception. It does nothing. So why not just leave it checked? Sure. And then you don't have to worry about it in case you do go with relative. Now, isn't it true that most people end up using perceptual for what they, I mean, obviously you can go back and forth and choose, but I think 90% of the time I've always printed in perceptual. Many people uh, did not go through this process of soft grouping because it's, it's difficult and it's challenging and it's kind of a pain in Photoshop and, and Lightroom made that easier. So we, I always recommend, uh, make sure that you uh, do the soft proofing right here in Epson print layout. Uh, but if you can't, or you haven't calibrated your monitor, a general rule, and there will be 15% of your viewers will say, no, you're absolutely wrong. As a general rule, perceptual is uh, the default. The best rule is soft proof. 
to make that decision. Or, or old school, if you can't soft proof, make a print of each and see which one you prefer and get a handle on how prints react. You could do that. And actually, if you're new to printing, you should do that to learn from it. But also that wastes time and, it does, and ink but it, and paper. It was how I learned in the old school. Right. Until you came out with a nice program that actually when soft proof When you, you pulled that, uh, that spanking new Argo C3 out of the Christmas tree box <laughs> there, right? Hey, it's going to have a revival after this. There's going to be a run on eBay for I, I will C3. say, here's, here's a couple of warnings, you know, for the people that are really, you know, experts out there. Yeah. Ooh, perceptual helps to perceive the way colors work. These, these come from the pre-press industry, have nothing to do with any emotional connection. These <laughs> words don't mean anything. They have to do with the proofing industry. The other thing is, I'm always surprised how, I'll, you know, after I print many images and very wide gamut images on papers like Legacy Platine, they're gonna capture as much saturation. And I'm going, oh, this is definitely gonna be perceptual. And, oh, it looked better on relative. <laughs> so beware of getting in the habit of, oh, I'm always using relative. Oh, I'm always gonna, you know, Take the 15 seconds okay. to run that soft proof, make the decision, keep black point compensation checked, and then you know what you do at this point? You click print. Go, <laughs> click it. Did you click? Click. It's that easy. Now, one of the things that's nice about printing from the mat is that if you had numerous images lined up here, once one is sent to the printer, you can start printing the second and the third and the fourth and you can open up the print dialog or the printer um, monitor box, activity box, and you can actually see them lined up and proceed. Mm -hmm. On the iPad, you can only print one at a time until it's done printing, and then you gotta print the second. Uh, a little bit of a trade-off, but uh, it does make, it won't print the whole sequence, so you can't say print all, but you'd click on one if it's the way you want it and hit print. And you know once it's it's cycled out to the printer, you and can- And Epson print layout is not a, for production. You maybe you want to consider a rip for that. Uh, and if you're using specialty medias or doing something different, or you have to change from unidirectional to bi-directional for whatever reason, uh, the driver or Lightroom may be the best way to go. But for the majority of images in a professional color managed workflow, it's, it's it's all I can tell our readers and viewers is that it's amazingly simple compared to what you had to go through before. If you ever opened up the print dialog box and had to go through all those considerations, that's none of that. You just go one, two, three, four, five. And after you've done it, some of those you won't even change because you're just going to be repeating yourself, you know, on, on the, the next several images. And you know what else is easy? What? Printing in black and white. <gasps> Should we try one of those? Okay. The famous chair picture. So this was a, a few years ago. It was uh, in uh, Arizona and it was an aviation uh, image where we're, with a chase plane and it was about the photographer photographing the plane and this, that was part of the ad campaign. And it was in August <clears throat> and the, the plane went up, the chase plane went up, the plane came down, the chase landed and the plane chain landed. It was too hot to fly. They couldn't get enough lift. They couldn't get it. So it was like, uh, what do we do? We come, we try again tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> that meant a free day to go take pictures. And I heard about this abandoned dog racing track about two miles, uh, two hours north of Phoenix. And uh, I thought, oh, great. It's up in the mountains. It's going to be, at least it's going to be cooler up there. It's going to be great. It was about uh, one degree cooler up there. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I did this image. Now, I, uh, as you should, this was captured in full color. And I made the conversion in black and white. You can convert in Epson print layout through the advanced black and white mode, but that's in a pinch. We really recommend making a conversion, in, black and white. whether you're using a third party plugin, whether you're doing the channel mixing, whether you love the joy of a six hour thing in Photoshop and multiple layers, whatever you do, do it there and then print it in Epson print layout. And it's the same process. File, automate, Epson print layout. And you can see this has added it to the browser from the uh, color image we were doing earlier. Everything is the same. Top down, the printer, the paper, everything remains the same. But instead of use ICC profile, click advanced black and white photo. Now, if you're using oh, the driver, yep. 
you have to go through a dance of about five different color settings to get to the yes. advanced black and white photo. And you have to go to Epson color controls, then you have to set color controls, then you have to go to another color set. There's the word color, 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 and you want to get the black and white. And yes, black and white are colors, but come on. We're going to start here neutral. And again, kind of working down. And many are familiar with the advanced black and white mode, yep. but there's one beautiful thing about using it in Epson print layout. So there are some presets here, uh, neutral, cool, warm. Uh, these are broad starting points only. Mm -hmm. You can select whatever you want. Let's keep it neutral. The default for the tone depends on the printer. I've seen this move from dark to darker. Often the default is darker. We recommend dark. People say, oh, why isn't the default normal? Uh, these are gamma settings, not gamut settings. Gamma. And uh, it was determined a long time ago that it's easier to have these names versus the sensitometric 1.8, 2.0, 2.0 over. But it's kind of like, why not normal? We're working on that, but select dark. Now, if you want it dead neutral, just leave the horizontal vertical axis here, add neutral. But if you're in the driver, you'll see an image uh, that we captured with a very famous fashion photographer, celebrity photographer a long time ago. Beautiful image of a woman, but it's that image. It's not your image. Advanced black and white mode in print layout. Let's say I want to tone this and I want to go into the cyanotype. I just grab this target. And if your monitor's calibrated, you can see it turn. You're going to see what's going to happen there. If your monitor's not calibrated, you're chasing your tail and you're kidding yourself. Calibrate your monitor. You want to hold up the box. <laughs> it's the most important thing you can do in printing. And you have all this control. Instead of kind of broad cyan or, or sure. sepia, you can move this in various directions. You can can you save that as a preset? You cannot. No. But if once you find what you like, uh, just I do, I do a screen grab yeah, screen of grab. the yeah. horizontal yeah. axis. And let's say, oh, I really want one more. You can just go up and down in whatever direction you want. Uh, some people do like that traditional sepia look. And, mm -hmm. and you can go here and boom. But to me, that's kind of like, boom, you know? And it's kind of like, yeah, we did it. And now you want to get a little better at it. Well, maybe you want to be a little bit more on the red side than yellow and maybe not quite as intense. And maybe you want to go in that direction. Or uh, maybe you want to go a little bit cooler. You have all of this control. And these are the controls if you wanted to do a conversion from color into black and white. I would keep these at zero and not worry about it. That somehow got moved over there. Leave that zero. Find whatever you want. Hit print. Wow. <laughs> this, the, I mean, once again, you, you doesn't get much simpler for that, especially for anybody, you know, that's concerned about making, you know, black and white conversions. Now, as you said, you can put a color image in here. Like if we click to this image and just try to convert that to black and white, you can see how quickly that can be done. So you can see how quickly they've been done. But, I would argue not done well. No, but it, you, you <laughs> got it okay. started. And yeah. now you can make adjustments to it, though, if you need to. But I always convert outside and make a black and white and uh, print from there. If you do see this and you're in Epson print layout, I go, oh, my God, what happened? It's because it's in the advanced black and white photo mode. If you were in the driver, you'd have to repeat and go sure. through all this stuff and you get all these warnings. Uh, simply go here to uh, use ICC profile and it's back. It's back. It's so simple.